Wow, what a flight, 47 minutes with, uh, I have total two motor runs in uh, one minute in total with a 2S. Uh, it's very, very meek with 10 by 6 props and uh, 1450 kV. So I recommend a higher kV if you're going to go for, for a 2S setup. Uh, I flew in formation with three Sea Eagles for over half an hour and uh, I was really convinced about the qualities of this bird when I was racing faster than them in, in, in the lift. I have uh, low rates on at the moment. I have way more authority on the ailerons that I need at the moment with a 40% expo. So, uh, but in when it's turbulent, it's, it's, it's really good. The flaps. Wow. That's good. Like it. Comes down. Um, it's easy to hand catch. I also have, have the rudder operational with the pull-pull system. Uh, it makes it turn much more coordinated. Very, very happy. So, uh, I fully recommend. This is an absolutely fantastic plane. Fabulous, just absolutely fabulous. There's plenty of space in the fuselage, which has two openings, of which the front one is here. The radio fits nicely in between the two compartments. Okay, so here we have this, the servo tray. The, the kit came with two carbon fiber uh, flats that you could use as a servo tray. Uh, I took uh, one and a half millimeter plywood. The thread from the pull pull comes to the innermost hole of the default uh, servo arm. I just cut it cut it off. It go, reaches in on top, it goes underneath, in through the bottom of the servo arm connection then to the shaft and then goes through that hole and it's, when you push down it's easy to pull on both threads and make it stiff and when you push the servo down onto the servo they stay they get uh, friction fit there and then you just screw screw in the servo holding screw and that means this this is a snug fit it's easy to adjust there's no glue required snake for the elevator comes in here it's a little bit frayed because i had to peel it back in a previous ins installation method i'm not just now i'm now going to put on a normal clevis mf jet clevis onto this one the micro size and uh, put it into the innermost hole of the servo arm if you look at the front it's a little bit rough it's not absolutely flat i had it pre-cut from the factory for a uh, a 36 millimeter front plate. Um, I then made the mistake of mounting the firewall uh, without grinding it, which meant that it fit only about one centimeter in from the original cutout. So I've taken almost, or maybe the amount of this this back plate, I've taken and shorted the nose further, which means I should really have a little bit larger uh, spinner plate to make it larger than the fuselage. It also poses challenges for the center of gravity for the craft. I've, I've flown this with 500 mAh 3S, 800 mAh 2S batteries. Those are about 50 grams each. I had to add about 75 grams of ballast really in the front here to make the COG right. So I think that uh, um, a one or 1.3 ampere hour 3s would be suitable or perhaps even larger 2s just because i had to cut the nose so much uh, or, or almost a centimeter and that centimeter is crucial it's a cool nose spinner which mean, means that it takes in air through the nose rudder is uh, fairly easy to attach it came with uh, a pre-cut carbon rod bar that I've uh, glued through the, the rudder with epoxy and then just took the thread uh, I, I routed the thread along with the, the carbon rod bar through the hole first so I had each half of the thread on, we, on, on one side then I just made a, a few, what do you call it, half overs 
uh, on to the end and uh, a little bit of, uh, of CA to fix it and that's how the pull pull lines are fixed. The, f the tail boom came with pre-cut grooves and uh, uh, tubes for the pull pull lines so just before the elevator table the lines enter into the into the car carbon boom and because the carbon boom is open in the back it's fairly easy to then route and see how the pull pull lines go forward to the servo. Uh, it comes with the horn and then I used a one millimeter drill to open up the horn a little bit so it fits the MF jet uh, micro uh, clevis. The boom came with two sort of uh, felt tip marker marks. I just dremeled open uh, the carbon boom between those two marks in the at the top of it. I put in the snake, I epoxy the snake to the boom and then just choose the sharp knife to cut off the, 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 the snake outer core and then the push rod itself goes through it without any any noticeable friction. I used KST DS245H servos uh, installing them for the ailerons. Um, I didn't have the right clevises so I used some heavy 2mm clevises at first and used the, the two MF jet ones to supply with the kit to, to put on the on the elevator horn which comes the, they are brass horns, just pin horns. Uh, I, I used the innermost hole on the KST servo arm, that is way out. I had to reduce the servo travel to 40% out of 110 maximum, which of, of course means there's a lot of quantification errors, etc. So I will remake these, I will remove these and then drill new holes much, much closer to the servo. It also makes the servo cover almost snug on it when, uh, when you slide it on. I just glued the the servo frame to 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 the upper skin of the wing, which has al already a carbon fiber covering, and then put a bead of epoxy mixed with glass balls there and there, easy to remove with a drevel, and then just remove the two screws securing the servo. A little bit frustrating was uh, to notice that the servo lead from the KST servo is two centimeters short of reaching out here. So I just put on a, a 10 centimeter extension. Moving on to the center section of the wing, there's a cutout just suitable for a multiplex uh, six pin connector in the middle of the wing. Um, I used uh, shrink tubing here to isolate all the soldering. That means it's so stiff I can't show it further in.